Hello. I want to give you a short presentation of our thermal software TRM, which is designed to calculate temperatures of printed boards based on the heating of components and the heating by electric currents. especially for uses of Altium Designer. Creation of a thermal model is very easy. If you are in Altium Designer, PCB doc, just export the data. Open TRM and import using the Altium wizard. The import sequence starts. And we get a preview of the geometry with layers, components, and drills. This is the top layer of this demo board. Then we have a bottom layer. We have the drilled holes plated in red, not plated in black and the components. The components look a little bit too high, but it's proportional to the thickness of the board. How can this data be parameterized? First of all, we look at the layers. The layers are imported as they appear in the layer stack manager of Altium. Base copper is one ounce. Maybe you add some extra plating. The drill files are listed together with plated or non-plated. All this comes directly from Altium. Each drill is listed with coordinates and properties in this list. The list can be, or each line can be manipulated in terms of changing values or changing materials. We have an interim table for the imported pads and components. And this interim data then finally are part of the loads table. It starts with components, position, size, material, and in the second part we see net names, we see component names, and we see the number of the connector. How can we bring some heat into this data? Just by selecting a component, say U1, and attach a test power of 1 watt, and maybe some more test power to the LEDs. It's also possible to have a multiple selection. We apply 100 milliwatts to each of those LEDs and delete the logo, for example, and so on. Now we are ready to calculate. We do a standard calculation without any additional input. The calculation is done iteratively, starting from an ambient temperature setting and heating up the, the board. The calculation could be done for a steady state solution or for a transient solution where you then have to give the time steps. 
we are ready. The maximum temperature is around 100 degrees Celsius. We can watch the, comp the result. This is a composite of top layer and components, SMD top components. U1 has got 40 Celsius. The hottest parts are the LEDs. And of course, the central LED is the hottest. And the LEDs are hot because they are small. And 0.1 Watt is a little bit too, too much for these tiny components. We can watch the temperature in the bottom layer and the component now are, is transparent. This is the dielectric and this is the com uh, temperature in the bottom layer. What we may be using is that the heat spreading is almost not visible and that's this is a consequence of the layout. If we watch the heat flux vector for, for the top layer, we see that gray means little heat flux and the pieces of non-negligible heat flux is where the copper traces can take heat away from the component. And this of course is a consequence of the the layout or the thermal conductivity here and here and here and a little bit here we have enough copper to let heat escape from this cage. The component is trapped with fences of FR4 and heat cannot escape. In that case it doesn't make sense to drill thermal vias because the vias are not effective. There are more ways to watch the results. For example, a 3D impression. And a tabular report. The report is repeating the input data and at the end a physics evaluation of each component. If we search for U1, we have an input value of 1 Watt. 0.28 Watts are leaving the component through the top face and 0.71 Watt are leaving into the board. To assign the data in TRM is one way of bringing umps and watts into the simulation. The other path is using the schematics in Altium. For example, if we have the schematics of U1, there's a way to add, to add parameters and the parameter name is TRM dash power and the value is watts. Let me assume one watt as before. The value is indicated in the corner. To assign amps is possible using the, the pads or the connectors of a component. For example, we select the 5 volt net and S1 is one of the jumpers and we assign two amps to connector number two and it's also a parameter. The parameter name is TRM. The value is two for connector two and minus two amp as a sink. The sink has to be compensated by a source of equal amps and for this we assume that in this 
LCD connector number 2, which is also part of the 5 volt net, has the counterpart 2 colon 2A. If the other connectors of this component have values, they can be added using a semicolon uh, in this string. The data we put into the schematics are exported and later imported in TRM. Just let me export. Same procedure. Just to make it simple, we install in the same directory. Import wizard. Import the currently open project, delete table beforehand, forward, forward, start import. It's replacing the previous settings. Import is done. And let us check the loads table. And if we scroll down, searching for U1, we see the value 1 watt. And we can search for the amps. These are the two amps in the 5 volt net. We calculate again the new situation. It's starting with the iteration loop for the potential or the voltage given by the two amp boundary condition from the distribution of the voltage in the nets. A joule heat density is derived and the joule heat is added to the power of the components to create a total power point by point and this gives some temperature. At the end we get a summary. The electric power in the net is 1 amp. There is 1 amp in component U1 and the total is 2. We have a look at the results. First the plots. This is the automatic plot of layer 1. This is obviously part of a trace, a 5 volt trace. We have the dielectric and the bottom layer. This is part of the net, this is part of the net, and this is part of the net. In the interactive mode, it's easy to show the voltage drop in 3D from high value to low value or the current density. Current density is low when the traces are wide, its current density is high and heating is high where the traces are narrow. And the report file tells us also electric results about in and out of currents, the heating layer by layer or the heating net by net. There are a lot of more items which can be added and special effects can be calculated, but that's not part of this introduction. If you are interested in a trial version, please let us know. Thank you for watching.